There are many different options for creating drawer joints at the router table, but one you might not be familiar with is the drawer lock joint. It's made with one bit and it forms a modified interlocking tongue and groove connection. In this video, I'll show you how to set up the bit to make this attractive joint using an inexpensive plastic setup block from Rockler. But first, let's take a closer look at the drawer lock joint on this little drawer. Rockler's drawer lock bit is designed to cut both halves of the joint. One profile for the drawer's face and another profile for the drawer's side. The drawer face cut happens with the workpiece laying flat on the router table in the first of two bit setups. Machining the drawer side involves standing the part vertically against the router table fence and routing it in a second bit setup. Now my drawer here uses 3 quarter inch thick stock for the drawer face and half inch stock for the drawer sides and back. And if you go this route with your drawers too, you can use this high density polyethylene setup block like I did. It's designed for this bit and those stock thicknesses. The reason why this setup block is so helpful is because it eliminates guesswork and lots of trial and error. It sets the position for both the drawer face cut, like this, and the drawer side cut, like this. Before we get started on the routing procedure, I want to talk for a minute about routing joints. Even with the setup block like this, joints rarely come out perfectly on the first try, so don't start by routing your actual drawer work pieces. Instead, make up some test stock that matches the exact thickness of the drawer stock you plan to use. That way, if you need to make any adjustments, you can make those here first before committing to your actual parts. Always start with test stock first. Ask any experienced woodworker and they'll tell you the same thing. So with that said, we'll make the drawer face cut first. Install the bit and raise it carefully until the cutters fit into the indentation on the edge of the setup block with the block laying flat on the router table. It's critical that you make this height adjustment carefully, so double check it. And now, let's set the fence. With the bit and block still engaged, slide the fence over until it's flush against the long edge of the setup block and lock down the fence. Make sure this adjustment happens with one of the bit's cutters positioned perpendicular to the fence at its maximum point of cutting arc. And now, we can route the 3 quarter inch test drawer face. Feed the stock past the bit in one smooth pass, keeping its end pressed against the router table fence. Be sure to back up the cut with a miter gauge or scrap block for stability and to reduce tear out on the exit edge. And now we can switch over to the drawer side cut. Flip the setup block on end this time and engage the cutters in the indentation on the face of the setup block. Then unlock the fence, slide it forward against the block and lock it in place again. Since the drawer side workpiece is going to be standing on edge this time, it's a good idea to use test stock that's wide enough so you can slide it along the fence without it wobbling. I've also got a feather board clamped in place to press the stock firmly against the fence. Start the router and feed the stock through the cut, making sure it doesn't tip away from the fence in the process. Now fit the test joint together and see how it looks. Now this is a good fit, but if the parts don't mesh together here, it means you need to raise or lower the bit a little bit and try again. And if the parts don't line up here on the outside, it means that you need to move the fence in or out a little bit instead. Once you get a good fitting test joint, go back and use those to set up the bit for making the cuts on your actual drawer parts because they'll confirm to you exactly how the bit needs to be set up for each cut. It's also worth mentioning that you can create joints where the drawer face extends past the drawer sides if you like. All that requires is making several deeper cuts on the drawer face, moving the fence back so more of the bit projects out from it. And that could come in handy in cases where you want to hide a drawer slide behind the drawer face, like this. Once they're dialed in at the router table, drawer lock joints are easy to make, look great, and offer good strength for smaller drawers. Keep them in mind for future projects. I'm Chris Marshall with Woodworkers Journal Magazine and Rockler and thanks for watching.